Hey everyone, Victoria Hansen here. I'm going to be doing a quick training on cold calling and phone etiquette for your real estate business. So let's jump right in. So today we're going to be discussing who is your audience and what do you talk to them about, do's, don'ts, and etiquette on the phone, and how follow-up translates into money and business for you. So who is your audience? So you have your SOI or your sphere of influence. These are people you already know and who know you. So these consist of family, friends, coworkers, your dentist, dog groomers, school affiliates, club or group members, or if you have any children, any of their connections through club or groups with their parents and guardians and um, people that you know from that way. So again, people that you already know and know you, and these people you're familiar with, comfortable having conversation with them, it's easy to pick up the phone and call them. Then you have your online lead generation. So you have your force registration leads or your pay-per-click leads. Force registration leads are traditionally like on landing pages or websites where someone is scrolling through a house or list of homes and they see a house they like and they want either more photos or information. So they click on it and a little box will pop up and say, great, we'd love to give you more information. Please share your name, number, email, and we'll reach out to you as soon as possible and give you more information. Or after registering, it will then allow them to open up more photos or information. But now that they've registered, it does go from your landing page or website and drops into a CRM system. That's normally how forced registration leads work. And then pay-per-click leads, examples of this would kind of be like Facebook and Instagram, where you have an advertising campaign you've set up with a certain parameter of a budget, and then you calculate how much per lead did it cost you, so you, or you're paying per click, essentially. And there's other platforms that also participate in the pay-per-click leads. Then you also have premier leads. These would be Zillow.com, Realtor.com, and Trulia.com. The reason that they're considered premier leads is because people that actually come to you from those portals are normally more serious and ready to go. They've clicked a button that says, I want this house, call me right now, or I want more information and speak to an agent right now. Sometimes even lenders and loan officers have leads from these portals where it says, I want to get pre-approved or pre-qualified right now, call me. So those are a little bit more premier. And then you have the online advertising platforms. There's so many other ones out there. Again, some of them do the force registration, some of them are pay-per-click. There's tons of other online advertising platforms, which I'm sure a lot of you already are using a variety of this. So just wanted to add that in there for online lead generation. And then you have your farmed leads. Sources of farm leads would include your local title and escrow offices. A lot of the time you can give them a neighborhood, a zip code, or draw a circle around an area or a square around an area, and they can pull from, sometimes it's local utility information, they pull names, phone numbers, emails of the like. And then I also added on there a property radar. So property radar is a paid for service, and it's kind of an a la carte situation where when you get into property radar as a member, there are some pieces of information as you dial a little deeper into people's personal info that you do have to pay for. Um, but Property Rate is a great resource and my team does use it, so I just wanted to put that on there for farming leads. It is a source that you can use. So farm leads are traditionally targeted marketing per subdivision, demographic, equity value, etc. And you normally target them with email blasts or mailers or flyers. Um, sometimes you can dive a little bit deeper and do really specific criteria, and those are the ones that you pick up the phone and call. So for your sphere of influence, again, this is easy conversation. You're gonna pick up the phone with no problem and ask them, friendly, how are you, checking in on you? And this is a great opportunity right now during COVID-19 to check in on everyone you know, family, friends, neighbors, just see how they're doing, make sure they're safe and healthy. Um, and you know, one of our biggest things that we teach is coming from a place of contribution. So this is a great opportunity for this. Come from a place of contribution, let them know you're here for them and you can help them with anything they need. And then you can segue into asking them to follow your business social media pages, asking for referrals, trying to get engagement from them that that way so that can also generate business for you and like I said this is easy conversation you know them they know you so you can easily pick up the phone and do that then with your online lead generation I always say introduce yourself first slowly and confidently and then you're gonna explain why you're contacting them so these online leads most of the time they've either requested to be reached out to via their registration 
or you're reaching out to them because your source has alerted you that you're, they're actively looking. So sometimes you have these portals where it will alert you, there is a lead looking in this neighborhood or at this house, do you wanna pick up the phone and call them? And you can say yes. So those are a little bit dialed in, those are a little bit more premier leads, online lead generation, but that's why you're contacting them. They've either asked you to or you've seen their activity and you wanna be of service to them. And then explain what you can offer them. So again, you're coming from a place of contribution. And in this case, you're contributing information first. So during this time, it's actually a really good segue. People are always asking, what's going on in the market? How is COVID-19 affecting real estate? So that's probably going to be the first thing that you can discuss with them. If there is a specific house they are interested in, you can give them information on that house, of course. So they're going to want that information from you. Maybe they've specifically requested, call me about this property. So of course, you're coming from a place of contributing information first. Then you can also ask them if they're looking to sell, you can run a CMA or a comparative market analysis on their home to give them value. And then if they're a buyer and maybe that particular property they asked you to call them about isn't the one for them, you can also contribute all the other available homes for sale as you do have direct access to the MLS as an agent. And then with your farmed leads, once again, these people you're introducing yourself first, slowly and confidently. These people, again, you are going to them. They have not asked you to call them. So you're gonna articulate that you're contacting individuals of like situations to them. For example of this would be, I'm calling everyone in the neighborhood to who has a four bedroom house because I have buyers right now. The market is so great. Are you considering selling your home? It would be a great time to sell, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you let them know I'm contacting people in your neighborhood with this type of, type of home or in your area with this as much equity in the home, something of that nature where you don't want them to feel specifically targeted. You don't want them to feel like you stalked them and are calling them. Let them know that as a service to your community, you're reaching out on a broad spectrum of people that fit a certain criteria to offer your services to them. Um, again, this is the third bullet point here, explaining what you can offer them. So market information, discussing COVID-19, again, a CMA on their homes they're looking to sell or available homes if they're looking to purchase. So coming from place of contribution, and these are the three different types of leads. And again, this is what you can discuss with them. So do's, don'ts, and etiquette. We're just gonna go down these checklists, the do's and the don'ts. So the do's, you're gonna speak slowly and clearly. If you get on the phone with someone who is kind of a rapid fire and they have a little bit more energy and they wanna quicken things up, absolutely mirror and match them, but it's always safest to start by speaking slowly and clearly. You also want to be easy to talk to and friendly. No one wants to get a random phone call from someone they've never met who they don't know, and then they're kind of a gruff and they're a little bit harsh and, you know, they're not really easygoing. So be easy to talk to and be friendly, be approachable. And then you're going to want to ask insightful questions to learn more about them and their needs. This is a really big one. Make sure that when you're on the phone with people that you are letting them do most of the talking and you're just prompting the conversation. You're letting the flow happen organically. People really love to talk about themselves, especially during a time like this when we're all stuck at home. So asking them about them, their story, their situation, what their needs are. It's really important that you let them know you are there to help them. You're contributing to them. So let them do a lot of the talking and ask questions about them. Also make sure that you use data and facts to support anything you claim to be truthful. This is again very important during COVID-19. There's a lot of information circulating whether it's social media or online articles from all different types of resources. Make sure that anything you're discussing with these people it is truthful, it's factual, it's come from a credible source that's been vetted so that you're not just pulling things out of thin air and it cannot be supported. If you don't know an answer to a question, tell them you're going to get that information and share it with them ASAP. This also helps segue into the next bullet point, which is your goal should be to confirm all their contact info and set an appointment to either meet virtually or have another conversation later. So this is a great opportunity. If they've asked you something you don't know or they want more information on something you don't have at the time, this is a great way to say, absolutely, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, let me just confirm, is this a good email for you? This phone number I called you on, is this your cell phone? Can I text you? And and then you're, con you're confirming how you can get in touch with them and that this is their contact information and you're promising to provide that information to them at a later date so you can set that up with them. You can invite them to do a virtual meeting through Zoom or you can just pick up the phone, text or email, whatever they would prefer. 
So jumping over into the don'ts. So of course, some of these are fairly self-explanatory. So speak quickly and rush the conversation. Absolutely, you're not gonna wanna do that. Again, if they are a little bit quicker in their pace after you've picked up the phone, you can mirror and match them, but make sure you're slow, steady, and speak clearly and don't rush them. Also, don't be a salesperson. So in your initial conversations with these people, if they're not in your SOI, they don't know you. So you're not gonna want to be very salesy and think that this phone call is necessarily going to be the end all, tell all to a business transaction with them. Right now, you're building a relationship with them. You're introducing yourself, you're providing value and worth, and you're trying to build rapport and a future uh, relationship with them to establish business. With your SOI, of course, your friends and family know that you're in real estate, but again, don't be too salesy with them either because you wanna come from a place of contribution and then you can ask them to, again, join your social media pages and give you referrals, but it's a lot easier and more comfortable if you're not in a salesy person sort of vibe. And then don't be rude or sound like you know best. There's gonna be a lot of people out there that you get on the phone that think that they know better than you. They're very opinionated. Maybe they've bought and sold homes over a dozen times in their lives. They went through this housing crash recession back in you know 2007, eight, nine, and they just know a lot about the market. So it's very important that you do share your facts and data with them when prompted and asked and if it's appropriate in the conversation, but they may come back and say that they think that they know better, they have other information, absolutely let them speak, tell them you're so interested to hear, that you always are educating yourself, take notes, and um, you know, let the conversation flow organically, but just know that some people out there are gonna think they know better than you, so just make sure that you're not rude and you're receptive to letting them speak. And then do not tell them personal information. So. Obviously, it's okay to share, oh, you have a dog, I have a dog, you know, something like that. But you're not going to want to go too far into the conversation about anything about you. So they're going to want to know who you are, where you work, and your experiences in the industry. But it's unnecessary to go into too much about your life or where you live now and all of your story. Like I said before in the do's, make sure you let them do most of the talking so that you're there just to listen and you're there to help them with their needs. And then do not discuss commissions in your first conversation. So this is primarily for sellers. The great news is if there's a buyer on the phone asking how much your service costs, you can immediately just say, as a buyer's agent, I am free to you. Sellers always pay commissions. So I'm working for free for you. I'm loyal to you. And I'll take you through the transaction to get your dream home A through Z. With sellers, what I normally do to segue from this, because you've just started your business relationship with them, I normally tell them I put together a formal listing appointment where we either meet virtually um, or we discuss on the phone and we go over all the details about my services for you and then we will discuss commissions. I try very hard to just allow that to be the way I get around that, that question and just continue our conversation with other topics because it's really important that you prove your worth and value before someone puts a number in their head of how much you're going to cost them. And then the last one here is don't shoot from the hip or make up answers. This again is just kind of spinning off of what I said in the do's category. So making sure that anything that you claim to be truthful, any data and facts that you give, make sure you're not shooting from the hip if they ask you something. If you don't know it, get that information from a credible source, bring it to them later, but don't make something up and hope that it's right and later find out you're wrong because that's not gonna start your relationship off well with that client potential business. Obviously, they're gonna think that you just made it up and maybe it was a lie or you didn't know. So it's always better to say, thank you so much for that question. I haven't been posed that question before. I'm gonna get that information for you. Can I follow up with you through email or call you next Thursday or something of that nature? Don't just shoot from the head. So this is a really important part of phone etiquette and essentially turning all these phone calls into business, which is your follow up. So some key points here that I wanted to touch on, if they don't hear from you again, you won't hear from them again. This is the majority of experiences for most agents who do pick up the phone and do cold calling. If you don't have a system to follow up with them and stay in front of them and show them your value and your worth, they're most likely not gonna hustle to try to keep up with you. So make sure that here the second bullet point, establish them on the drip campaign or AKA a smart plan. I've put a little, no, at the bottom here, see my training on drip campaigns for more follow-up tips and ideas. I do go into depth about drip campaigns in that training, so it gives you ideas. The third one down also will tie into that, which is provide educational and informative content to show your value and worth to them. Again, I go over that in my drip campaign, how you can stay in front of them and show them that you're valuable and worthy of their business. 
And then the next one is repeat and referral business will stem from satisfactory customer service, which essentially translate to following up with them. Now, we are all in the sales side of this industry, but we're still consumers on a daily basis. And we know what it's like to have satisfactory customer service. We are more likely to repeat our business with someone, refer business to someone, even write a review on someone if we have satisfactory customer service. And in this style of cold calling in real estate, following up does translate to good customer service. And then the last one here I wanted to touch on is hustle to help them in the beginning so they know they can count on you to hustle for them during the entire transaction. And what I mean by that is, you know, negotiating terms of an offer, the sales price, repairs, etc. If you show them in the beginning how you handle your business, you're staying in front of them, you're valuable, you want to know what they need and how you can help them, you are hustling for them, they are going to see that that's how you conduct business and they're going to trust and want to work with you and know you're going to get them the best price for their house or you're going to negotiate the strongest offer for them as a buyer and get them the home that they want. So again, hustling for them in the beginning, it's going to set the tone of your relationship with them and they're going to be able to know that's how you do business and it really helps build a good relationship with your clients. So that's all from me. I hope that you guys took away some really valuable and helpful information through this training. Thank you for tuning in. Again, we just went over some cold calling and phone etiquette for your real estate business. If you want any more information on this or you want to dive any deeper, here's my contact information. I'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and I can't wait to see you guys next time.